Good afternoon and welcome to our sunset safari and in particular a very warm welcome of Mrs. Ridges Club School. It's wonderful to have you on board with us this afternoon and we're very excited to hear all of the questions and comments that you have to make. My apologies for a somewhat gory start but we do have a wonderful afternoon planned for you ahead. My name is Janie. I have VM on camera with me this afternoon. Brent is out with Dave on the other vehicle looking for other wonderful things to show you, but we just had to start with one of the most famous animals that is so stereotypically, stereotypically associated with South Africa. So we're coming to you live. What you're seeing is happening right here in the Sabi Sands, which falls under basically 4 million or close to 4 million hectares worth of unfenced wilderness area. That's bigger than some small countries and at the moment we're sitting with a group of males known as the Birmingham boys and their buffalo killer. And look how pleased with himself he's looking. This gentleman has been looking exceptionally thin. His eye is quite swollen but we've got a male lion in his pride that has taken down a female buffalo. Now apparently this buffalo was actually killed by a group of five lionesses known as the Inkahuma Pride and they've been kicked off the kill <coughs> by the presence of these five young males. Now these young males are associating with this particular pride. They are dominant in this area and they do mate with them. But nevertheless they never miss an opportunity to steal a meal without having to work for it themselves. Now I hear that you've been chatting a lot about homeostasis within mammals and this is a really good example, having an African male lion sitting right in front of us to chat a little bit about the way in which they work. And there's a reason that male lions are often famed to be or thought of as lazy, always stealing the female's kill, making females do all of the work. But the reason for that is they're about 100 kilograms, so to just over 200 pounds more than the females in body weight and they have those big thick manes around their necks. As you, I'm sure you know, the smaller your surface area to volume ratio, so the larger the animal, the harder it is for them to lose heat. So male lions can very easily overheat and that's one of the reasons why they only really participate in the hunts towards the end if they can get the females to do the work for them. That doesn't mean that they are not capable of hunting for themselves, they can but their body temperature cannot go up by more than a, look at that, look how thin he is. Shame, boy, you've been in the wars. Their body temperature can't really go up more than two degrees Fahrenheit, unlike us. Look at this, I've never seen him in such bad condition. I wonder what's been happening. The rest of this group, known as the Birmingham Boys, are all looking a little bit beaten up and I think he's been recovering from an injury. And that's why he's lost as much condition as he has. His hip bones and his spine definitely shouldn't be sticking out like that. And none of the other boys are looking as bad. Uh, Kayla. Kayla is wondering what other plants and animals we might, we might inhabit this area. And Kayla, I'm, ass I'm assuming you're talking in general, the enormous area that we have of wilderness. Kayla, we've got all of the members of the Big Five. We have, in other words, lions, rhino, elephant, buffalo and leopard. We also have cheetah, one of my personal favorite, the wild dogs, and my absolute personal favorite, the spotted hyena. There is also all manner of antelope species from impala and we get giraffe, zebra, wildebeest or brindled gnus as they are known in other parts of the world. We've got a tremendous amount of biodiversity. Just look at how he's panting here. All of that digestion of the meat is producing a tremendous amount of heat within his belly. And it's very typical for a predator out here to gorge themselves as rapidly as possible in order to, because you never know when your meal might be taken from you. So you want to try and get eat as much of it as quickly as possible, but that full belly that they, gain, that they gain after feasting on a buffalo will last only about two days before they have worked their way through it. 
Oh, and he's being plagued by flies as well. You can see how they're irritating him. His left eye is also really, really swollen. Now, I mentioned that there were five of them. And because we can't, because there are lots of people that want to come and enjoy the sighting, we can't stay with them for as long as I would like to. So what I'm going to do is give you a quick tour and show you where the rest of them are. First of all, though, I want to show you something that I've just spotted now. And that is, it wasn't just a female buffalo that they killed. Right, let me go forward ever so slightly. You should be able, can you see that from there, Vian? Here we go. They've killed her calf as well, and there is absolutely nothing left of that baby buffalo except for the almost inedible hooves. That doesn't mean that those hooves will be wasted. At some point a hyena will come past and chomp on them and chew them. It was a very young buffalo. It must have been a brand new calf. Now the lions have made a complete meal of that little baby. Uh, the rest of them, I don't want to go too far, here is one here just lying off underneath the trees. You can just see him poking through the leaves as I go forward you'll get a nice clear view. Here we go, you can see him panting away once again and flicking his ears to get rid of the flies. And then, he's not looking nearly as thin as this other male, which leads me to believe that this male is, his sort of bad condition and that thinness has been caused by an injury and not just a lack of food. So these five boys move together. They're not necessarily brothers. Some of them are cousins as well, but they've come from the same pride the same family when they were youngsters which has led them to have very very tight in them and actually given them a tremendous you can just imagine how having five is far better than just two there's another line off here lying down in the bushes and just before we started with your safari there was another gentleman lying with him I can't see where he's gone now I think he's moved further back into the shade Now this lion sitting in front of us panting, whilst he is exceptionally thin, will be fine. I know it looks, it is hard to see an animal in this sort of condition, but he will regain condition very rapidly now that his injuries have healed up. I've been watching the way that he walks, he doesn't seem to be limping too badly. It's just that he has been in some skirmishes. He's enjoyed his meal so much that he's actually dribbling down his chin. The king of the beasts is rather smelly this afternoon. His paws covered in buffalo. And speaking from direct first-hand experience, it is not a very pleasant scent that is coming from this buffalo. It's a combination of its stomach contents plus the feces of the lion. It definitely not what I would describe as a pleasant odour, but nevertheless good for them, especially good for this guy, that he managed to get a meal. Now, I mentioned that lions overheat very, very easily, and I'll leave it up to you guys to look into the biology of that and why it is that they do overheat like that. But there is a reason behind it. One of the reasons behind it is that we as human beings have evolved alongside these magnificent animals and we've along evolved to be the dominant diurnal predator of this particular area. So during the day we are the dominant predator. We are above them in the food chain. That is the way we've, we've evolved. They've evolved to operate at night when it's much cooler. So that's one of the reasons why they overheat during the day. They are primarily nocturnal animals. And once night falls, that feeling that you get when you sort of want to be home at the end of the day as it starts to get dark, that's a very, very instinctive response to a fear that we would have had a couple of hundred or tens of thousands of years ago when we lived out here with these lions. This is definitely a very special way to start off our afternoon. 
Unfortunately, we're only going to be able to stay here for a couple more minutes, but this gives me an opportunity to chat with some of the guides. In the meantime, let's find out how Brent's afternoon has gone, because apparently he's found the rest of the herd that this buffalo might have come from. So, welcome to the Sunset School Safari. My name is Brent and I have Dave on camera and we're with a massive herd of buffalo. They're probably, from my estimation here, uh, a good 300 or so. And this is a very, probably very similar to the type of herd that those lions would have caught. Those two out and welcome to Mrs. Rich's class. 